with uh, the midpoint of the 2010 uh, U.S. Sport Aviation Expo starting to work its way uh, toward the end of the third day. Uh, obviously, the, the, what we're trying to do now is take a look at some of the aircraft that are gathering some attention. There's an awful lot of talk about what you have here. Why don't you explain to me the design methodology and your thoughts about bringing this aircraft to market and why? Well, Jim, this is uh, the Super Sport Cub, which we are ne renaming this year the Carbon Cub SS. Its, uh, its roots are in our Carbon Cub prototype that uh, a lot of people have seen on YouTube a couple of years ago that took off in 18 feet up in Valdez, Alaska in a contest there and uh, landed in 53. It's got lots of horsepower and not much empty weight, so it's an exciting airplane. We had to go back and take 125 pounds out of that airplane to make it qualify uh, under the sport pilot rules, the, the ASTM rules. And uh, so that was no small feat. We, we have a lot of uh, carbon fiber where Piper used wood or aluminum or steel, and we have aluminum where Piper used steel. And uh, just everywhere you look, we've simplified the airplane. We've got a very strong structure. We've actually tested this airplane way beyond the 1,430 pound float load uh, limit for the ASTM rules, but we've also simplified it and our parts count is about half of what a Piper Super Cub, for instance, the, the ailerons interchange and the flaps interchange left to right. So things like that as far as keeping the parts count low is what we've uh, concentrated on. It looks like a Cub, but no part of this airplane will interchange with a Piper Cub. All in all, we've got a, a very strong, lightweight package with the biggest engine in the light sport category. Our engine is capable of putting out 180 horsepower for five minutes for takeoff and climb. And we pull it back to 80 horsepower where you typically are cruising with a Cub type airplane. You're at altitude, you pull the power back. You don't want to cruise wide open or even at 75% power, no one does. So why not? put the limitation on and let the category and the aircraft mesh as far as their capabilities and their allowances. And that's what we've done. So we've looked carefully at the rules and we've crafted the airplane so that it fits within the rules. Um, but we have the largest airplane in, in LSA with the largest engine, I believe, as far as wingspan and cockpit area and the door size, all of those categories. Uh, this is a real airplane and this way we were selling it is a, a real airplane in the LSA uh, category. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. What's the market reception been like? Obviously, you're creating some buzz on all pl of, of, of all places. The Cirrus uh, board I was looking at the other day, there's a fellow fairly well known in the Cirrus community who took a ride with one of your people and was landing it on a beachfront someplace, and he called it the airplane that allowed you to take your airport with you. <laughs> I hadn't seen that, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, good way to look at it. The market has uh, been very receptive. Since we introduced this airplane in April, We've taken about 32 or 33 orders, which is about one a week, and we are currently building at the rate of one a week. It's taken us some time to spool up to that, but as of right now, we're at a, a one per week rate. I gotta ask, how much? The base price is 163. Um, we offer the airplane in kit form also. It's a very complete kit, and we've just finished our manual in light of the new 51% rule. We're excited about the about what's coming and uh, what we're doing currently. We've, we've got an airplane that fits a lot of uh, needs. Do you anticipate a builder's program around this? The new 51% rule really doesn't allow, uh, or at least the way we're interpreting it right now, there's no room for a builder's assistant uh, program. It's, we're, honestly, we haven't developed that, but I, I don't think there's much room there. We couldn't help much. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly. 
to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. As an aside, uh, the conversation you and I were having earlier about what was happening in this industry, obviously you've got a strong, long background in conventional GA, and now, of course, looking at the additional market opportunities presented by Light Sport. Uh, so I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I'm going to ask you what you think your secret is, or at least the secrets that uh, you're looking at for the moment, to being successful in an LSA market in 2010. I was asked that earlier, um, and I think part of the, the reason for the success is that we can appeal to a broader range of pilot than some of the LSA manufacturers can. We aren't just selling transportation, we're selling fun. And most of the people that I see promoting an airplane are selling some form of transportation packaged in a size of a, of a fuselage that isn't easy to get into and most of the customers are older that are being forced to look at LSA as their opportunity to stay in aviation. We have some of that segment but we also have the younger guys that want an awesome performing airplane and I don't know of any airplane anywhere under any category of license that will outperform this airplane. I mean it doesn't matter if it's a home built, we compete with those guys at Valdez and we're the ones to beat and uh, it doesn't matter if it's LSA or standard category or experimental home build, you still gotta beat us if you're gonna win at Valdez. And this is a LSA legal factory built airplane. For the utilitarian uh, fun machine, uh, you know, we can cruise along at 105 to 115. Uh, I tell people to expect 95 to 105 and nobody's called me a liar yet, but realistically, you can go faster. But the sweet spot is about 110 miles an hour, burning five gallons an hour. And that's pretty good. It'll go 120, burning six gallons an hour. But when you go 128, you're burning eight gallons an hour. And you soon lose the efficiency. And of course, the speed limit at sea level is 138 or 120 knots. But uh, at five and six gallons an hour, you have a decent cross-country airplane. You have an airplane that'll climb at over 2,000 feet a minute when you open the throttle at sea level. And that's pretty thrilling. So uh, it's, a, it's an exciting airplane. Here's an oddball for you, uh, especially since I, I don't know that anybody who actually looks in an airplane like this is going to object to this, but are you hampered at all by the tail dragger issue? I'm sure we are. Uh, we, don't, we aren't told by our customers that I would buy your airplane if it had a nose wheel on it. I, that, that, that doesn't typically happen, but I, I do notice people come up to the booth and keep walking when they see it's a tail dragger and they don't have any experience in a tail wheel airplane. As tailwheel airplanes go, this is a very easy one to fly, but uh, there are some people that probably write us off because we don't have a nose wheel. Thank you so much.